Okay, so our next lesson is going to be a, uh, a very pretty theorem due to Galois that concerns our edge parameters, alpha prime and beta prime. Uh, first, I need to do one uh, pretty simple definition. A, uh, a vertex V is called isolated if the degree of V equals zero. I think I may have used this term before, but I'm not, not sure I've actually typed out the, 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 the definition properly. So an isolated vertex just means it has degree zero. Um, if you remember, when we're looking for edge covers, we're looking for a set of edges that hits all of the vertices. Well, if you've got a vertex of degree zero, it can't be hit by any edge. So in the case that you've got a vertex of degree zero, there's, there's, nothing, uh, there's nothing we can do. You just won't have an edge cover. So for the purposes of this, this theorem, we're going to be, I'm looking for edge covers, and so I'm going to be assuming there's no vertex of degree zero. So Galois theorem says if G is simple, and has no isolated vertex, then in fact, alpha prime of G plus beta, whoa, beta prime of G is equal to the number of vertices of G. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> That's quite nice. Uh, if you remember when we were looking at the vertex parameters, alpha and beta. So alpha was the size of the largest independent set and beta is the size of the smallest vertex cover. So there again in the land of simple graphs, uh, it was quite, quite straightforward. Alpha plus beta is always equal to the number of vertices just because the complement of, of an independent set is a, is a vertex cover. Uh, here we're seeing alpha prime plus beta prime adding these two parameters also gives us the number of vertices of the graph. Um, but uh, the, proof is not, the proof is a little bit more subtle than that. It's not, not such a simple uh, exchange. So it's quite a, quite, a nice, uh, quite a nice fact. The proof is fairly straightforward, and we're going to really lean on this maximum size matching and minimum size cover. So what we're going to be doing here is, um, so again, I'm, I'm trying to prove some equals, you know, I'm trying to prove the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. So my left-hand side is alpha prime plus beta prime. My right-hand side is number of vertices. I want to prove left-hand side equals right-hand side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prove both inequalities. So we'll prove alpha prime plus beta prime is greater than or equal to the number of vertices, and we'll prove that it's less than or equal to the number of vertices. And the way we're going to do that here is we're going to, um, uh, we're going to exploit our maximum size matching and our minimum size cover. So you'll see we sort of exploit them in similar ways, but exploiting them using a, uh, using a matching to get a a uh, cover is going to give us one inequality, and using a cover to get a matching is going to give the other one. So uh, yeah, so there, there's a real, there's a really a very pretty argument, um, and um, yeah, and so without further ado, let's do it. So um, so as I said, we're going to be the game we're going to play here is we're going to use a maximum size matching to construct an edge cover. And then we'll flip that argument on its head and use a mac. Uh, sorry, use a minimum vertex cover to make a, a matching. So, uh, so let's go. Let M be a, a, a maximum size matching. And oh, let me go ahead and draw a picture. So there's M. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use M to construct an edge cover. And it's a pretty simple thing I'm going to do. Anytime you see a, so I'm going to extend M. I'm going to build a matching, uh, sorry, I'm going to build an edge cover L. L's, I'm going to start out by using all the edges in M and I'm going to add some extra edges. Well, every time you see another vertex out here that's not already covered by M, I'm going to choose an edge incident with that vertex and add it to my to my cover. 
So again, I'm, I'm going to form a cover L. I start with M, and for every vertex that's not covered by an edge of M, I'm going to add some edge to L that hits that vertex. So here's, here's a vertex out here. Maybe you add this edge. Here's a vertex over here. Maybe you add that edge. Um, in fact, because M is a maximum size matching, you can see that every time you do add an edge, it's not going to look like the last thing I added. You're not going to have another edge in the graph that uh, um, <clears throat> that doesn't hit one of these uh, uh, one of these that you've already seen down here. So every time you add an edge, it's going to look like this. So what we're going to do here, I will say, we're going to extend M to an edge cover by the following process. For every vertex X not covered by M, I'm going to add some edge incident with X to L. By adding a new edge incident to each vertex uh, not covered by M. Right, so that's what we're going to do. So again, every time you see an edge that's not, sorry, a vertex that's not covered by M, I'm just going to take some edge incident with that vertex and add it. If I keep doing that, at the end of the day, I'm going to have an edge cover, right? I'm going to have a set of edges that hits all the vertices. Every vertex is going to be incident with one of my edges. So this forms a cover. L is going to be a cover. And now I don't know that L is a particularly efficient cover at the moment, right? We found some vertex cover. Maybe there are smaller ones, but this gives us a bound, right? I know that M was a maximum size matching. So M was the very largest matching you can find in the graph. We've used it to construct a cover L. I don't know if there might be a better cover out there, but what I've got will give me a bound. And let's see what that bound is. So now, how big is this edge cover that I formed in the end? Well, uh, how many edges do, did I add? Well, the size of L, I started out with size of M edges, the orange edges at the start. Now, what did I have to do? For every vertex that wasn't covered by my matching, I had to add another edge. So I have to add, let me go super slow. I have to add the number of vertices not covered by M. I have to add that, I added that many extra edges. That was the size of the cover I created, right? Now, uh, so M, size of M plus the number of vertices not covered by M. Well, I, I know how many vertices are not covered by M. If the matching has, the, the size of the matching is size of M, <laughs> The si that, that matching, if the matching is T edges, it covers two T vertices. And that means the number of vertices not covered would be the total number of vertices minus two T. So this is equal to size of M plus the total number of vertices in the graph minus the number covered by my matching, which is minus twice the size of M. So we've determined that the size of, so let me write down what I've got. So we've now determined that um, the size of M plus the size of L, oh, I wrote this wrong. The number of vertices of G, this is equal to the size of M plus the size of L. This is just by our construction. That's what our construction gave us. Now, again, <clears throat> M is the size of the largest matching. That is by definition alpha prime of G. That's how we got that. Now, what about this L? Well, we found an edge cover. The, the, the actual edge cover, as far as we know, it might be more efficient. It might be that the, the best possible edge cover uses fewer edges than L. But what's got to be true is that the size of L is going to be greater than or equal to beta prime right? Beta prime of G is the size of the smallest edge cover. We know that L is an edge cover. So this is going to be greater than or equal to the size of L is greater than or equal to beta prime of G. So what we've done here is we've just proved one direction. We proved that the number of vertices of our graph is greater than or equal to. We just did this direction.
We just proved that the number of vertices of the graph is greater than or equal to number of, uh, sorry, the alpha prime plus beta prime. And now what we're going to do is we're going to play a very similar game, but we're going to go from an optimal edge cover to, uh, to a matching. And we're going to use very, very much the same logic, but we're kind of playing in the other direction because we're going from this, uh, this edge cover that is optimal, so it's the smallest possible edge cover, and we're going to produce a matching. And as you'll see, this is going to give us an inequality in the, in the other direction. So now I'm just going to erase what I have here. Um, So I'll try and keep track of what we've proved. So uh, again, we've, we've already proved this direction. We've proved alpha prime plus beta prime is less than or equal to the number of vertices of the graph. Now I'm going to let L be a, a minimum size edge cover. There it is. L is the minimum size edge cover. And we're going to look a little bit at the structure of L. Um, let's, let's think about, let's, let's go ahead and think about, let's let H be the graph. Let's say G is equal to V comma E. And let's let H be the graph that you get by taking all of the vertices, but just the edges in L. Well, there's H. Uh, now, this graph H, what is it going to look like? Well, uh, you can't have isolated vertices as components. Remember, L is an edge cover. So that means every vertex has got to be incident with some edge in L. So my graph will have minimum degree 1. But I, I claim that, in fact, any time you look at an edge of L, one of the two ends of that edge will have degree one in H. So suppose not. So let's suppose, uh, say E is an edge of L, and uh, um, say E is equal to the edge UV, and suppose that the degree in the graph H of U and the degree in H of V are at least two. So in other words, what I'm telling you is I, I have some, some edge cover here, <clears throat> and I've picked out some edge here. Here's E. Its ends are U and V. And I'm telling you that the degree of U in H, so when I, H is, again, just the graph on the edges in our edge cover. L. So the orange edges are just the edges of L. Suppose that this edge E is in my set L, but the vertex U is also incident with another edge of L, and same with the vertex V. Well, in that case, you could have just have removed the edge E from the cover, right? Just take E and throw it out. You know, like an, if, I, if, I'm, if I have an edge cover, I mean, if I'm looking at edge covers, a, a, an edge only covers its two ends. That's its whole purpose. I mean, that's the only thing an edge ever does. When you pick up an edge, it covers this vertex and that vertex. It covers its two ends. If both ends were already covered by the other edges, there's no point in taking that edge, right? So, so in fact, this doesn't happen. Anytime you're looking at an edge of this graph H, one of its two ends has to be degree one. So this led us, so, uh, um, well, so uh, this, this, this leads us to a contradiction. So let me, um, okay. Uh, since L is a min size edge cover, every edge of H, say UV, in L has either the degree in H of U equal one or 
the degree in h of v equal one. And again, the, the point it's, I mean, when we're looking for edge covers, the, the only thing an edge does is it covers the two ends of that edge. If, if you have a minimum size edge cover, you're never gonna use an edge with the property that you also use some other edge incident with the vertex u and some other edge incident with the vertex v because then you could just remove the edge. So this graph H that we're staring at on just the, the edges L in our edge cover, it's got a pretty simple structure, right? Anytime you look at an, an edge, one of the two ends is degree one. Well, I mean, you certainly aren't going to have any cycles in this graph. I'm clearly staring at a forest, but moreover, the, the forest, it can't even have a, a, a three edge path in it, right? If you have a three edge path, the middle edge, it can, can just be removed. And that means that, uh, in, in fact, every component of this graph H is just a star. So let me just draw a picture over here on the side. So, so H, remember this is the graph on all the vertices but just the edges in L. What I'm telling you is that this is just going to be a, just going to be a star. Right. This is easy to see. I mean, if there's a vertex of, of higher degree, of degree bigger than one in your component, every edge incident with it has to have its other end of degree one. So it has to be a star. That's, that's all you've got. So this is what the graph uh, H looks like. Okay, so it's just a disjoint union of stars. So in fact, it's a union of like K, uh, let me just say stars. And I'll just, uh, I'll just say a graph isomorphic to K1T is a star. So that's my graph H. It, anytime you're taking a, uh, an edge cover, even an edge cover that's just minimal, an edge cover where there's no redundant edge, you're going to have the property that the set of edges that you chose for that edge cover is going to give you a, um, when, when you look at the graph just on those edges, you're going to be looking at a very simple structured graph, namely uh, uh, just a forest where each component is, is a star. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, Right now, I'm going to show you how we're going to select a matching. Pretty naive way to take a matching. What am, what am I going to do? I'm just going to take one edge from each component of H. I, clearly, I can do that. It's going to get me a matching. So I'm going to choose a matching. M by taking uh, one edge from each component of H. Uh, again, it's clear that I can do that. It's clear that it gives me a matching. What's uh, perhaps not so clear is that that should in any way be a good matching. But once again, we're going to be in a realm where I can very easily determine the size of what I have uh, have selected here, and that's going to give me a, a bound. So let's see how large this thing is. Of course, the oh man, I'm just always so, so short of space here. The size of M. This is the number of components of the graph H. Right? Remember, H is uh, this graph just on the edges in L. But we know about forests. The number of components in a forest, that's the number of vertices minus the number of edges. So this is going to equal the number of vertices minus the number of edges. That's minus L. So once again, I've arranged that the size of my matching plus the size of my edge cover is, is equal to the total number of vertices. So this looks just like what we had before. We have arranged that the total number of vertices is equal to the size of our matching M plus the size of our cover L. Now what's going on? Well, in this case, our edge cover L 
that was the very minimum edge cover. The size of L is equal to uh, beta prime of G. Right? That's how we chose L. How about our matching M? Well, we we constructed some matching. We don't we don't know if that's a great matching or not, but what's certainly true is that the size of the largest matching in the graph must be greater than or equal to the size of our matching M. So that means that alpha prime of G is greater than or equal to the size of M. And so we've proved that the total number of vertices in the graph is less than or equal to alpha prime plus beta prime. Well, you remember up here, we previously proved that the number of vertices was, uh, was greater than or equal to alpha prime plus beta prime. And so they must be equal. So you see the, the, you see the cleverness of this argument, right? We've used an optimal matching to construct a cover. And that gets us a, a bound one way because we know that the cover we found is, is, is good, but we don't know yet it's optimal. And then, then we got the bound the other way by taking the optimal cover and using that to construct a matching. So again, we've now proved, uh, well, we've proved this theorem of Galai. So we've shown that anytime you've got a simple graph with no isolated vertex, you've got this wonderful feature that alpha prime plus beta prime is the total number of vertices. Let me, um, let me do one, uh, one corollary of this. Um, so this is going to be another theorem about bipartite graphs. <clears throat> If G is a bipartite graph and uh, has no isolated vertex, then I claim that, in fact, alpha is equal to beta prime. And this is, in fact, a very quick corollary of what we've got. Um, <clears throat> so you remember that uh, in every simple graph, alpha plus beta is always equal to the number of vertices. So alpha of G plus beta of G. This is always equal to the number of vertices of the graph. Uh, we've just proved this theorem of Galai that says that alpha prime plus beta prime is the number of vertices. Again, uh, sorry, that's under the assumption that our graph has no isolated vertex, but that's what we've got here. We've got a, a graph with no isolated vertex. Uh, so that tells me alpha plus beta is equal to alpha prime plus beta prime. But you remember our theorem due to Koenig and Egervari. So Koenig and Egervari, uh, so this is, anyway, all of these are little things that we've proved. This was, uh, this is kind of an easy observation. This was Galai. Koenig Egervari tells us that for bipartite graphs, um, for bipartite graphs, we always have alpha prime of G equal to beta of G uh, for bipartite. So that was, uh, well, that's Koenig Egervari. I don't want to write those names again. Anyway, so, uh, um, but now I'm just combining all these things that I know, right? So alpha plus beta equals alpha prime plus beta prime, but uh, where am I? So, in fact, let me switch colors. But alpha prime is always equal to beta in this case, and that means that alpha must be equal to beta prime. So, uh, so it's just combining these things that gives us to it, uh, gives this thing to it uh, us. Um, so alpha again, this is the size of the largest independent set. Beta prime is the size of the smallest edge cover. So in every bipartite graph the size of the largest independent set will equal the size of the minimum edge cover. And, uh, and that'll do it for this, uh, this little segment.